Let me let Chris Begley in. All right, so this is the Park Commission meeting of October 19th. I'm going to give the quick spiel and do a roll call of attendance. So in accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel and that this meeting of the Lunenburg Park Commission is being conducted remotely. Accordingly, for those that are participating via video, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. The town of Lunenburg in response to the COVID-19 is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health, Massachusetts Department of Public Health, and the CDC regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent the spread. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 20, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. The order which can be found posted on the town website on the COVID-19 information center page can be accessed to the town manager's webpage allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as re reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. And as always, this meeting does have public comments and it will have board comment. Okay, so let me do a quick roll call. Um, Dave Passios. Here. Susanna Jewell. Here. Chris Sullivan. Here. Kayla Wright is not here and Jack Waterquins is not here. All right, so now we have a waiting room in order to get in. So if anybody hears of anybody in the waiting room, um, just speak out because if I don't catch them to admit them, they're gonna be sitting there for a few minutes, but I will do my best. Um, all right, so first thing on our agenda um, is the approval of the September and October minutes. Um, the October minutes being the one where we had the joint BOS meeting um, to appoint Chris to the commission. Um, did anybody have any questions or corrections on those? Nobody? Nope. Okay, I did them before I could do them, Karen. I had them. I had that on my to-do list. Can you do tonight? <laughs> I will do tonight's, yes. Thank you. Okay. okay. So can I get a motion to approve those? We can approve them together. Karen, do you have the date, the actual dates? Yes, I can get them for you. One second. Uh, one, uh, October is October 6th. Yep, October 6th and September 14th. 14th. Nope, it was, didn't we change it? Uh, the minutes say 14th. Yep, it's the 14th. So it's September 14th and October 6th. Okay, I move to approve the minutes as submitted for September of the Parks Commission for September 14th and October 6th. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have to do a roll call vote on that. Um, Dave Passios? Aye. Susanna? Aye. Chris? Uh, aye. If and I can vote at a meeting I wasn't a part of. You can. You, you can. Okay. Um, and I can myself. <laughs> Those are all been passed. Um, we have no programming updates because we do not have our um, um, let's see. we do not have our rec director. Um, did you see her updates that she sent on email? I did, and let's okay. um, try to figure out how the best to do that. Let me pull them up. Here, one second. All right, so per Kayla, I'll give a quick summary. Um, she's putting together the list for Marshall Park this week based on what was sent to her, um, and she'll have it out to everybody by the beginning of the week. Just remember that once that gets sent to you, we can't have dialogue between us. If you want to send comments back to Kayla specifically for Kayla, you can do that. Um, and if you haven't gotten a list into Kayla, um, feel free to get something over to her. Um, she said that trunk or treating had great interest and they've extended the time frame from 11 to 1 and that doesn't sound right 11 to 1 and 10 30 to 2 30. So they, moved, like they moved it 10 30 to 2 30 instead of 11 to 1. Okay okay that makes sense so she's changed it to 10 30 to 2 30 to in, or, in order to accommodate the wait list they anticipate 250 participants and 25 businesses passing out um uh Pumpkin carving is also going ahead. They have 20 families registered. 
while two programming is open and those programs have a lower maximum as they will take place indoors. Um, and the winter programming has been started. Um, Karen, where, what's the location for the pumpkin carving? Do you I know? It's Marshall Park. I'd have to okay. go back and look, Dave, but I'm pretty positive it's Marshall Park. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, so that's all on that front for her. Um, so if it's all right with everybody, I'd like to, um, since there's nobody here from the skate park yet, I'd like to jump down um, and talk about the field usage fees and the field use policy since we've got a we've got a group of people here. Um, Steve, I don't know if you saw my, is that okay with everybody I, first? Yeah, that's fine. Steve, did you get my an email from me? I, I did, I okay. did. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that, and I apologize, she just notified us um, shortly before I sent that, that she wasn't gonna be here, so. Um, all right, so we have the 2021 field usage fees and field policy on our agenda. Um, since we have folks from Little League here, I would like to give you the opportunity to put some comments in. What I can tell you is I'm going to be very hesitant to answer many questions because this isn't the um, suggestion coming from us. Kayla has the information, or I think what's going to be better answers to your questions, but let's attempt it and see where it gets us. Okay, that's fair. And, and I think, um, who did I, who else did I see from the board on the call? Did I see you, RJ, and you, Chris, as well? Yep, Chris is here and RJ's here. Excellent. Um, I guess I just wanted to understand a little bit more in regards to um, the usage fees, especially since I did hear that there was um, budget, I guess, going back to the cash account of the town, which you know typically would be for maintenance and utilities, right? And I do understand, do understand that. I think what's been happening at the parks, right, especially at least on the baseball fields, because we see it, is that there hasn't really been any care and feeding, right? So that maintenance piece for tons of you know several of the fields and the fences especially, right? There are times when contractors have come in like the T-ball field and then they never put the fence back, right? And then we also see that probably four or five years ago when the new softball dugouts went up, right? We didn't do that, but you know, the fences were actually never repaired. So my understanding is that could be underneath maintenance. And that's kind of really where where I was in that in that email of you know why would we be raising fees if money's going back to the town and we're not fixing the things underneath maintenance right? I'm just taking notes as I'm sure. And RJ and Chris, did you have anything else to add? Yeah, I was just, I would just add to that. Uh... You know, one of the things that we're not used to in, in Little League, at least, is, is sort of having a place to go and ask for stuff. So we're, we're trying to figure out as a board, what are the things that we should ask for, um, you know, for the fees that we're submitting? And so I think Steve's on the right track asking about the, the maintenance things or the, you know, what could be safety things at, um, you know, when it comes to those fences. Uh, but also, uh, should we be should we be looking for the materials that go into the field that are used by, um, you know, other people down there, uh, like lime or conditioner for the fields, fertilizers? I know there's been times when they fertilized in the past, or or at least the intent was to. Um, this year was a little bit different, um, and so really, just how do we how do we make a request when we see something that is broken? And then also, what can we can we expect a standard? Um, amount of service and, and sort of preparedness to the fields. Um, because we typically, the Little League just paid for all that or, or did it through volunteer days. Um, and so we're trying to balance collecting the right amount, passing the right amount onto the town and getting the field in good playing shape for the kids. Okay. Chris, do you wanna add anything before we try to throw some responses out to any of that? Um, no, I was sort of wondering about the same thing with RJ. Like we put in a lot of time and effort and getting the fields ready on cleanup day. And then, I mean, I drive by Fitzgerald Field a lot and the infield is like already starting to be back to grass. I mean, 
So that was a sort of about the maintenance and upkeep too. Okay. So, and any of you others feel free to chime in. Um, when the ten dollar fee was implemented, it was basically for use of the use of the fields for keeping it as baseball fields, and um, there should be better maintenance of it. I will I will not disagree on that one at all. Um, I think Kayla has a good idea of what it's costing us. Yes, we do turn funds back to the, I shouldn't say we, cause that's not the right word. There are, there's parks commission has no direct budget from the town. Um, we never, as far as I know, we never have. It goes into a account that's under the DPW that's expended only by the DPW. So, that is supposed to be doing maintenance. Um, we can certainly get on them to do better maintenance. And I do think that um, when Kayla brings forward more information at our next meeting that we can ask for those standards, what are those standards and what should they be? You guys should not be having to fertilize a lawn. And I would actually ask you to go back to Kayla on any of those things, just because it becomes a liability on our front to have people doing things that we're that we don't know that they're doing. No, 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 no. Uh, let me let me correct that too. So yeah, for fertilizing, you know, we would always notify Jack or ask Jack, and he always had a schedule for the fertilizer. Um, we we would we had spent money in regards to conditioner, especially like um, Powell Field, where that's clay, where we need to kind of help that thing drain right or it just becomes a sludge puddle um and i i will say that this year and probably last year the preparation of the field for the infield i don't know if it was um a town employee or if that was contracted out but there were it, it was it, it was dragged and nail dragged and cleaned up right um fairly regularly, probably once or twice during the season. So that was great, you know, and, and we were glad to see that. Um, I, you know, I think some of the things that were on my mind were really more about, you know, like that t-ball field, right? It's all broken down to, gra to grass again. Um, and part of that is some of that maintenance, right? Th by dragging the field that way, um, right? Like a full drag with some, some machine, it's actually spreading all the weeds. And if you don't take care of the weeds, basically you end up with a weeded field, which is what T-ball is right now. And then whoever, whatever vendor Jack was using too, basically dismantled that fence in that right field corner and never put it back. And actually whoever went in last took the two pipes and they bent them back, right? So to get a, probably a bigger piece of material in there or machinery in there. And I mean, and that's just, you know, managing, managing a vendor, right? It can be, but it's, I mean, in the grand scheme, it's, it's, we, it's the responsibility of the town, especially if it's a safety issue and we have kids in there playing. I mean, right. it's, oh, for sure. You know, so the, um, the chain of command, I guess you could say on that, now that we have Kayla right on board would be to go through Kayla. Uh, but Let's do this. And I, I apologize for um, having you all come without her here tonight. Um, well, first of all, did any of the other three have anything to add, Dave, Susanna, or Chris? Yeah, I just I just see some of these um, things as um, things that definitely Kayla is going to be extremely helpful in. She's new and she's going to be, this is why we needed her. <laughs> This is a great example of why we needed a rec director and someone that just is going to be the go-to person and these sort of things. These definitely should be taken care of and they're not little league's responsibility, in my opinion. Great. And on the other, to, to the um, rate hike, I think that if Kayla reviewed it, I, like she's not here right now to, to speak to it, but she reviewed what the, it, what should cost to run the fields and that's where the number came from right i i believe so i, I mean, believe so but i mean again i don't want without her here i don't yeah yeah my understanding but i don't want to yeah. miss i don't want to miss quote um right yeah, yeah but i don't i don't yep. feel like little league should be having to pay for a broken fence or anything like that no. 
<laughs> how, how about like things that that would be like maintenance, right? So things that you know, I've been the president since 2013, right? So there are things that have been in place since way before I got here. So let's say the yellow safety liner on the fence that's you know probably 20 years old at this point, you know that needs to be repaired. So where would that come from? Would that come from Little League or would that come from the town? No, it should come if it's parks property. It should come from the town. Okay. Repair and maintenance of that those things should be coming from that piece of the town budget that goes under the DPW for care and maintenance. So we're sort of like the policy making group and then the daily maintenance, which is what I think that at your, at like your example is the, the yellow on the top of the fence would co come under our DPW for maintenance. Um, I would like to ask Jack Rodequin's last day with the DPW, I believe is October 30th. I don't know who they're bringing in. I don't know if it's, I don't know any of that. Yeah. As we're moving forward, whether you email Kayla or you email somebody on the DPW side, if you don't get a timely response, I'd like you to forward it. You can use that parks at Lunenburg online email address so that we're aware of it, that it didn't get taken care of because I don't think the four of us, we wouldn't want to have a safety issue on the field. We don't want to have dilapidated issues. And I, I honestly don't want to see our facilities run down any more than they have for lack of maintenance. So if you're seeing something that you've spoken up about or you're not getting a reply on that's not being taken care of, let us know so we can um, we can work with trying to get that resolved. Um, yeah. Because that's not, we're trying to rehab Marshall Park. We're not trying to make it worse than it already is. Yeah, no, no, understandable and that's appreciated. Um, I think the only time that we ever see that is usually with the water. And, and we actually did send, like right after one of, the, one of the drags by the DPW, which kind of makes that infield like super fluffy, right? And you can't play on it until it's watered. And then I think there, there must have been a water issue because the Montachusett guy said that there was a broken pipe after, we, after um, that those bathrooms were torn down. Did you hear about that or? I heard about broken pipes. I, I've heard about at least one and I heard about another one where water was, I, I'm, I'm not saying it was you guys, but I heard another one where somehow water was left on. Um, but so yes, I have heard of water issues down at Marshall. Yeah, it, it could have been us because the water was off because when they tore it out, they demolished that building. They broke the pipe that fed all the fields and then it was shut down. It must've been shut down at the street. And it didn't go back on probably for six, seven, six, seven, eight weeks. So anyway, those are the so those are kind of the timely ones where we typically send a note to we did send that one to Kayla and Jack. And I'm not sure if we ever got a response back on it, but kind of like those were sort of emergency ones. So um, what would you suggest that we do in that that kind of a case? If you don't get a response back, and an, if if you're sending an email and don't get a response and then it's an emergency situation, you can call directly over to the DPW and talk to Sam in the, in the front office. Or if it's something that you aren't even getting a response with a phone call, you can call town manager's office. Okay. The, she's the person that delegated the DPW um, yeah. for maintenance. Um, and you can always, I mean, you can always reach out to me. I'll squeak any wheel that needs to be just be weeks to get okay. some care of it. Um, you know, Perfect. so. Karen, yeah. if I could. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steve, we spoke a little bit at the field there a few weeks ago, but one of the big problems over the years, the past few years anyway, um, from my perspective, is that there have not been eyes on the parks properties on a regular basis. Um, I dare say that I've walked Marshall Park and a couple of the other parks way more times than a, a DPW employee has in the last five years. Yeah. And you guys are the eyes still that are there quite often and a lot more often than town employees are. So if you pass on the information and it doesn't get responded to, like Karen just said, then we should be made, made aware of it and a more emergency part, uh, issue directly to town manager uh, but between all of us we'll get something done about it 
Um, I had to bring up the bleacher conditions at Marshall Park three or four times over six months to get the planks replaced. And, and that was a case of nobody had eyes on the park. Uh, yes, yes, and, and, and I agree with you. And I have seen you walking through there. And, and, that, and that's it, is, is that part of, is that going to be part of Kayla's job to be that, you know, care and feeding or that, I, I, I don't know, it's almost like the way Joe Ruth looks after that big field, right? He's always, his eyes are always there, you know, but he is just a, you know, a third party, right? Is that gonna be part of Kayla's remit to be responsible for that? I'd like it to be, um, you know, I have to go back through her. I need to go back through the job description of that position. I, that was, that's what I think we were all under the um, assumption or belief that it was going to be with that she was going to be, um, you know, watching out for these properties. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's one of those, um, it, this is a work in progress. I mean, if I look back to, you know, Steve, when you first, Came back in when you came into Little League in 2013. I think I was a uh, maybe 2016 somewhere in there on uh, to parks. We're a totally different working group than we were then, and we're still a huge work in progress and trying to figure out how to make everything work and and sort of make all everybody happy in in the end. And the process of getting there involves things like this: having you folks come and have a conversation and. Um, you know, have a conversation with us, express your concerns, ask questions that we may not think about. And, you know, we can only go up from here. So, you know, that was a long sort of deviated answer from your initial question of that Kayla's responsibility. Um, yes, it is. And we will make sure that it's, we get more eyes on there. We have a new um, DPW director, whether I don't, again, don't know who it is or how it's going to work, but you know, it's conversations that we're going to have from the very beginning to see what we can do about making sure this stuff is, is done and is done in a prompt and timely manner and taken care of in a prompt and timely manner. That's wonderful. And, and if it is, and I guess the only other thing I'd, I'd add is, you know, that some sort of process be put in place if it is going to, going to be part of Kayla's responsibility, you know, uh, you know, to help kind of create that list and kind of work through that list and prioritize it. Yep. And there's, there's always going to be things that somebody doesn't catch. I mean, I'm, I, Dave's been down there. I've been down there. Um, you know, there's always going to be something. So never feel like you shouldn't say something because you think that one of us are, or you think Kayla's are, you know, it's the more times it gets put into our head that there's something wrong, you know, that needs to be repaired. That's not a bad thing in my opinion. I just think it just, you know, says we're involved people that are down at these fields. So if you guys see it, if any of you see it, just send an email or make a phone call and um, we'll work on getting it taken care of. And yes, we will we'll come up with a better process. It's part of our um, yearly goals this year is to get some policies in place and process will definitely be part of that. Yeah. So, um, so Kayla will hopefully be at our next meeting. I apologize that she's not here to give you answers and I apologize that we're not taking an official vote on it. I just don't want to assume that I know an answer when I don't know an answer. Um, With her not here, you may want to take a vote that it's her responsibility. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she would disagree with anything that um, said about what's her responsibility. But. Yeah, well, um, also what I'll, what I'll do is I actually, um, I went out this afternoon for, you know, 20 minutes and I took a handful of pictures and I threw it in a slide deck. And what I'll do is I'll just email that to you guys. Yep. And we do have, um, so we have um, Marshall Park on our radar as for a, to create a master plan for that. Um, one of the things we'll be doing is doing a site walk. Um, you guys are always welcome to join us as well if you feel like walking the park yet again, because you don't spend enough time down there. Right. Um, you know, and coming up with ways that we're going to you know, add things to it to make it, as Dave Passios likes to say, the gem of the community. That will be our, that'll be the um, B park, um, you know, the main park where we can have more community events and things like that. So 
Um, but, but at the same time, not forgetting the other parks. And, and that's yeah. one thing that we need to be really careful about. I, as I stated in a previous meeting, I grew up in that neighborhood. That park is in my head. So I sometimes get so wrapped up in that, I forget about the other parks properties. But I do right try now. to, what's that? It's the biggest park right now. So, I mean, it does make sense that it would be sort of like the, you know. Yeah, except the other fields need to be functional, and if there's issues, they, they need to be addressed. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, folks, so much for your contributions tonight. Um, I will send over an email when I know what our next date is for our next meeting, um, and hopefully, barring any illness, Kayla will be present to be able to um, sort of give more information on how she came up with that price jump. Um, and we'll get a definite decision going um, so that you guys can figure out what you need to do. Yep, perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Awesome Thanks, Darren. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, guys. All right, so let's go back up. Um, I think Anthony got on um, a minute ago. Um, there's somebody else on too. If anybody wants to unmute themselves to um, make a public comment, feel free to do so during the topic that you're interested in. Um, all right, so skate park. The agenda item on this is discussion on a request for a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen. So um, the chair of the Board of Selectmen and the town manager, um, as well as the, um, the guy, Anthony Caozo, who's spearheading the um, skate park group, have asked for a joint meeting uh, with the Board of Selectmen to, to so start hashing out some of where they are, um, how far they've gotten, um, and things like that. And I didn't want to commit to a joint meeting until I knew that everybody else was in agreement that this is something that we want to be um, involved with. So Chris, have you followed any of the um, skate park stuff? Uh, yes, I've done, uh, I've, I've talked with Anthony and, and I did a golf, I helped plan a golf tournament for them in the past. So I'm, I'm pretty, I think I was, I was at that initial board of selectmen meeting two years ago, whatever it was. Okay. Um, so the park commission had decided, was it earlier this year, maybe January, February, that we were not in support of the skate park going in at TC Pasio. So we had let the board of selectmen know, we let um, the skate group know, um, and then it was sort of quiet for a number of months and it just came up again. Um, so what is everybody's thought and whether or not we join into a board of selectmen conversation or joint meeting um, that I would assume would talk about location, size, their timeline, um, and all that kind of stuff. If I may, Dave Palacios. Um, I think being part of the conversation is fine. I very much doubt it's gonna change my mind as to what was voted by the commission previous to me coming on the commission. Uh, but after that meeting, if uh, we wanna take another vote, that's fine, but I will be voting against it at TCP. Um, I was at the meeting that the commission voted not to support it at TCP. And the suggestion at that meeting was to roll it into um, the master plan for Marshall Park. Uh, I think that's the board's, the commission's position. Uh, again, we've got some new members and we may have, hopefully we have another member in the near future. So it may be worth rehashing that within the commission members, uh, but that's where the commission stands with an official vote at this point. I agree. Susanna, do you have any, or Chris? Yeah, I would uh, just uh, actually say exactly the same thing. Um, I'm willing to go and to have the meeting, but I don't, I'm still a no on it at being at TC Pasios uh, for a number of reasons. Um, and I'm actually pretty excited about rolling it into the Marshall Park plan because it's an appropriate place for it. Chris, are you good with us doing a joint meeting? Yeah, the joint meeting is is fine. I go to the board for for sure. Um, 
you know, I thought the, the first meeting they had with the board was uh, productive. Uh, you know, the, when they when they did that two years ago, um, I had to do a little research, I guess, on the um, the vote and location and so forth. Um, yeah. See what that see what that is. That being a part and or hearing the meeting initially, um, the logic of that location at the time made sense, but I maybe get a little more historical reference on okay. the uh, uh, TC location. I'm happy to talk to you at any point as I know Anthony sure. as well. Um, so in looking at a calendar in, so I'm, my Tuesday nights are pretty booked through the middle of November. Um, do you want me to just go to the board of selectmen and tell them to put us on any Tuesday and then as long as we can get a quorum of three of us there that works or do we want to throw a date out? Karen, did you get a feel as to whether they wanted to do it by, before the end of October or can we wait till after elections? Anthony, can you jump on for a second? I'm here. Okay, so can you help me refresh my memory on the last email that came out? There was a suggestion, it might have been by you to wait until my avail availability had opened up because at that point we were only a member of board of three um, and we wanted all of us there. Do you remember how mm -hmm. that? Do I remember what, Karen? Do you remember how, like, was he pushing for something in October, or was he okay? Oh no, yeah, no, and, and honestly, there, there, there's nothing at all that is going to change between now and the end of the year. It just it, it, this conversation does need to happen, at least in my opinion. And I appreciate you guys, you know, supporting the decision to me. But no, there, there's there, there, there's nothing that is going to require that we meet earlier rather than later but before the end of the year would be, be sensible okay um and if i can add yeah, yeah, yeah. just sort of um some talking points just you know listening to you guys you know i, I appreciate that you guys all have a position on this that, that's good there's nothing worse than meeting with people saying i don't know um but to be able to collectively articulate your thoughts um, and I imagine, you know, this is something you'll do before, you know, prior to whatever meeting we have with whoever, whenever. Um, but if you guys want to, you know, engage in a dialogue before that, because we've obviously spent hundreds of hours working on this project, um, both with the Board of Selectmen and talking with the fire department, the police department. And, you know, looking back, I just reviewed the, uh, the Board of Selectmen meeting that the boys made the pitch at, presented all the, the available options and listen to the entire town's feedback on where they thought it should be. Um, and I can send you the link to that if, you, if you'd like, but you know, definitely worth the review just to understand where you know, the, the organization was at and why the guidance was provided that was that led us to where we are today. Okay. All right. But yeah, I, I'd love to understand you know, your team's position on this, the rationale and um, yeah. Keep the dialogue going. I'm not very good at articulating, guys, of what our position, I guess, is to Anthony because he asked me. Oh no, no, I, I, I don't want to know now. I'm just saying no, that no, you know, no, at some no, point. No, 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 I know. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, in looking at the calendar quickly, um, the third and the tenth are definitely out for me, and then the seventeenth is special town meeting, the twenty fourth is open space, and also the Tuesday before um, Thanksgiving. So, I'm going to actually recommend to them that we move into early December. Um, and try to meet, you know, the first or second Tuesday. Um, so I'll throw that back to them if, unless somebody disagrees, um, and we'll we'll go from there and see where see where this brings us. Karen, let's give them the first of December and then see what they come back with. I will do that. Perfect. Susanna and Chris, you okay with that? Can they not Works. attend one of our meetings. Or did we have to attend a, a VOS meeting? I kind of think we're going to their meeting. <laughs> <laughs> they win, is that it? <laughs> Actually, you know, that, Suzanne, you make a really good point. Is there a reason why they we wouldn't come to one of your meetings? Yeah. I do not know. And, 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 and the reason why I ask this is, you know, uh, I mean, God, you guys could even come to one of our meetings, but the, we don't have to deal with the whole open meeting law business. So that would kind of negate things. But the, the reason why I say that is the... If, if we go into a, 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 a forum that is the Board of Selectmen meeting and 
do this as an agenda item, it just, it, 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 it creates an entirely different dialogue. I would much rather see this be a, a, a you know, the, the, the focus of the discussion for the evening. So we actually come away with some discussed, negotiated, workable points versus having this be part of the, you know, the mix of the evening. Well, let me, let me throw it out to them and let's see. I, I'm, if they want to come to one of ours, if we can get them to bite to come to one of ours, I'm fine with that too. That problem with going to yours, Anthony, is if there's a quorum. Oh, no, no, no. You, no, you're not going. No, you're not going to mine. I don't, I don't have space. Yeah, that, that doesn't work. Well, it does, I, I was saying that facetiously. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, because then it becomes a quorum and it's got to yeah, be. Quorum. No, it's, it's a mess. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me go back to them. Tell them that we are um, on board to have a joint meeting with them. Um, I will make, I will highly recommend that they attend one of our meetings and we can actually set a November and December meeting date tonight if we'd like um, and see if we can make that happen versus um, having to do a Tuesday night um, EOS meeting. So Sarah, can I interrupt for a second? I'd just like to ask Anthony something if he happens to have the date right there available. Anthony, the uh, meeting that you spoke about with the pre the original presentation, do you know what that date was? Ooh, Christopher, do you know? I know you just, I just sent this to you. I might have it, hold on. I, 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 could, I could go look it up. Um, well, if somebody can send it to me, I'd like to review the tape of that meeting. I was there, but uh, that was a while ago. A lot of water's run under the bridge since then. Yeah. Uh, you want to give me a second? I'll look it up. I'm scrolling back through email. It was 3 16 2018. Thank you, Chris. Three six, sorry, three six. Three six. Three six. Okay. And uh, where you want to go in there, you want to go about twelve and a half minutes in. And it lasts for, I don't know, it's a good twenty minute conversation. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Excellent. All right. So Anthony, watch your email and um we'll get that. Super. Thank you. Is there anything else I can do for you guys tonight? Are we good? Am I good to drop? You're good to drop. Super. Awesome. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Welcome to the team, Chris. <laughs> Bye. All right. So next on our agenda is park properties, including but not limited to Marshall Park and the track. I was hoping that somebody from Open Space was going to be here. Um, Dave joined the Open Space meeting. Was it last week, Dave? Yeah, I believe it, um, it was. And there was some great discussion on something called the park grant and that grant um, um, is they they just they I don't even want to attempt to put it into words because they just know so much more than I do and I believe Kayla knows it as well. Um, but they're not here so. Karen if I could just make a couple of quick comments about that it's it's a reimbursement uh, grant. Uh, very similar to what they use for the Saliva property. In fact, I think it was the same process. Um, so the town would have to commit to uh, a portion of the total cost um, and then the grant would cover the rest. The application process for that starts in March uh, next year and the grants are usually uh, awarded I believe it was by September. Uh, and that's the best I can give you. I've, I, I've cautioned like Karen, not having the exact correct information. I don't wanna put out the wrong information out there. Uh, there are some things that we will probably need funding for before the money for the, if we get the grant, before the money for the grant could be used anyway. Um, the planning and engineering and coordinating of what we want to do there uh, is not covered by that type of funding. Uh, there are other sources 
And once we get past the uh, November elections, um, I've been in conversation with who I'm hoping is going to be our legislative delegation. And they are, are on board to help us as best they can. And they would like to see or like to see the park uh, sometime in mid-November if uh, the conditions allow. So I have done a little bit of outreach. Um, I also kind of enlisted the Open Space Committee because of their expertise with writing grants and timeframes and so on and so forth. They have tentatively committed to um, be our, or at least assist with applying for grants. Uh, so we can concentrate on the design and, and what we wanna see there and try to pull that part of the project together and have them and Kayla working together for the funding side of it. Okay. My next uh, move will be to conservation most likely because they're gonna have to be heavily involved with any improvements from the Marshall Pond side up through the woods because there is a, a lot of wetlands in there. I but uh, off of um, Howell Field as well, I think. I'm sorry, what's that? I think there might be wetlands off the back of Powell Field. Yeah, much closer than they should be, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yes, you're you're right. Um, so I think that, in at least in my head, and and any of you can chime in if you don't agree. I think the next logical step. Um, so we've asked people to send the commissioners to send their ideas over to Caleb. It doesn't matter how pie in the sky ideas they are, just send them over to Kayla. Whatever you think that you'd like to see over at um, Marshall Park, just send your ideas. It doesn't matter how big, small, you know, tiny payments or gigantic costs to, to do this. Just send your ideas over. We can we can weed through them and remove what you know we don't want. So I think that was a good step. I think the next step might be to tour Marshall Park. Um, we did it once a few years ago when Dave wasn't a commissioner and he sort of, he led us through there. So everybody could see the layout of it and what it looks like. And I'd like to include the Marshall Pond side of things um, this time around as well. Um, and if everybody wore long pants and closed toe shoes, we can actually walk through the poison ivy to get down to the basketball court if it's still there. Uh, I know that there's actually, a, there's, there's actually a little trail that's getting yep, cut no, down the basketball court now. There's a clear path down there yeah. now. Yeah. Awesome. So does that sound logical to everybody else to do a tour of, of Marshall? Karen, sure. one, other, one other suggestion to uh, simultaneously start some outreach to the public. And this just popped into my head, but uh, I, I'm not sure if uh, we'd be able to pull it off or if Kayla could pull it off for us. But I'm wondering if we would be able to put together uh, a postcard form type of informational card with a request for the public's ideas on the back of it to either be handed in at town meeting, back in at town meeting, have it on the table at, at special town meeting or in the packet, um, or they could easily mail it back to us or drop it at town hall or, or whatever the process could be. But we start the outreach now. So we get a feel from the public what they want to see there simultaneously as we kind of sort out what we think should be there. I think it'll help move the process uh, forward much quicker. Yep, I think that's a good idea. I think there's uh, an opportunity to include those. Can, can we put those in like tax bills and so forth as part of the town? You can. I don't you put a slip of paper in or something like that. Right? Yep, yep, you can. And I believe that's how the um, open space surveys were done a few years ago. Um, was they went out, and I also think that the skate group might have sent something via tax bills as well. So we can certainly. Um, I don't know what the cost is for that, but we can certainly look into it. I'm writing it down now. And, and that would reach a wider audience, but the only one downside to the tax bills is that the tax bill goes to the property owner who is not necessarily um, a resident or citizen of Lunenburg. But 
it still reaches a wider audience, definitely. Yeah. And I can tell you though that um, the, I want to say there was like 300 or so open space responses sent back. Um, and that was supposedly a really good number. Um, so yes, it will reach more people. I agree with Dave though, that is it reaching the right people? Um, and I asked, to be honest with you, if I wasn't on the open space committee, I'm not sure I would have filled it out. <laughs> I just, <laughs> one more step on, I think if there was something online, I would have been more apt to fill it out. Um, There's enough Lunarberg Facebook pages that we could probably yeah. hit, you know, a fair, a fair number of people and get a decent response with a survey monkey or, you know, yeah. Google, even a Google form. I'll, I'll recommend it. I'll tell, I mean, obviously I'll send this stuff to her anyway, but I'll ask her to watch this meeting, um, you know, to hear the little lead piece, but also to, um, you know, to hear this part of the conversation. I, I think the other thing that it will do if we have a presence at town meeting is it will get the people that come to town meeting every year and every, every spring, every fall, um, starting to see us active and when we do come for funding for Marshall Park, whatever way it is, I, I honestly, as I've stated in the past, I hope we can do this without direct um, revenue generated tax money from the uh, local citizens. I hope we can do this with uh, grants and state funding and so on, which is still tax money, but it's not directly impacting our budget. Um, but we may need to. And especially for a matching grant, we'll have to go to town meeting. So if we start being visible now, um, a year from now, when we go after an article for funding, uh, those people will have been exposed at least to what we've done up to that point. When do we need a marketing degree for this, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. So everybody's good with me going back to Kayla and asking yeah. her to ball rolling on community engagement. All right, awesome. Can I, do you mind if I interrupt for a second? Yep, go ahead, Mr. Crowley. Hi, my name is Jared Crowley. I'm on the board for the uh, Little League. And uh, I received an email asking me to attend this or any of us that could, because uh, from what I understand, we might be raising the dues per child and I might be way out of line here. I just trying to get a scope of what's going on because I got this at the 11th yep. hour. Yep, so we actually, um, the, we actually hit that on our, one of our first agenda items. So I'm, sorry, um, I'm at the firehouse. So I jumped on when I could. Okay. <laughs> um, Steve Chow was here. RJ was here. Chris Begley. Um, oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. So they sort of gave what their concerns were, you know, and all that. I'm sure it's probably similar to what you have. Um, and we're, we did not decide anything on it because our rec director is not here tonight. So okay. because of that, we um, didn't want to be answering questions or, um, acknowledging concerns in the, in the wrong way. So we did not take a vote on it tonight. We just sort of had a general discussion on, with their concerns. And then we're going to talk about it again and hopefully make a decision at our next meeting. I'm sorry for interrupting the flow. I, I didn't nope. realize that they'd even been there. <laughs> nope, it's okay. it's okay. We got back from a run and I was like, oh, I'm supposed to get into this meeting. Like, That's okay. We, we're glad that you... you when you your could... job gets in the way, it's just no fun. <laughs> I really get it. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. And uh, thanks for you guys for taking your time to do what you are doing. Thank so. you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jared. I'm going to sign Be off. Safe. Be have safe, Jared. Thank you. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. So does anybody else have anything on um, the Marshall side of things? Do we want to set a date for a walkthrough? Yeah, I do. I do. What does everybody want to do? I mean, maybe weather dependent, but, you know, pick a date and then a rain date or something. Yeah. Um. What does everybody's availability look like in terms of like weekdays versus weekends? Uh, weekends, I'm pretty, Saturdays, I'm pretty, are better than other days, I guess. Oh, sorry, house phone. Okay. <laughs> Still have a house phone? <laughs> yeah, just for the kids. I, we have one too. We're, we're the same way. Um, better Friday afternoons for everybody. That's the only day I guarantee I don't have a meeting because nobody wants to schedule a meeting on a Friday. Okay. And um, until winter sets in hard up north, I'm, I'm up north most weekends, except uh, as we get closer to elections. 
Um, and, and that is actually one weekend that might work if we wanted to do it on a weekend would be the, uh, what is that, 31st? From oh, first. And that's our trunk or treat event. Um, oh yeah, that's right, yeah. So I would be hesitant on that one. Um, Chris, you work, correct? Yeah, mostly from here though. Um, I go to the office, I'm uh, back and forth. So it, I mean, I can be definitely be flexible. Could either of you be available on a Friday afternoon? Uh, if it's sure. something like 2.30 or 3, I probably could. Yeah. Yeah, it would have to be after 3 for me, unless That's I take better. the second half of the day off. I'd be fine with, so when does daylight savings time hit? Does anybody know? No, uh, that first weekend in November. So it'd be really nice to hit it before that, but I don't know, that's pushing us up against next weekend. So Fridays, um, the 30th, the 6th, the 13th, this Friday, I'm not around. Um, not here this Friday. Yeah, does, this, does that work for anybody? The 30th, the 6th or the 13th? I can do the 30th. I'll just commit it on my calendar if you guys can do yeah, it. I think the 30th should be okay. Long range forecast says AM showers right now. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably be put snow. Steak, if you want to put steak in the uh, <laughs> 10 day forecast. Muck boots. Yeah, put some, put some muck boots on. Okay, so I'm good on the 30th. Um, if that works, Dave, what time do you think you can do? Um, and I'm let's, looking at Dave just because he's a really good guide through that area. Yeah, I grew up in that park. Um, trying to think through my. Let's shoot for three thirty or four, one of those two times. Three thirty is a little bit early for me if I get stuck at work, but. We do. We do four. Okay. Susanna, would that work for you? That's great. It's better. Chris, is that okay? That. Yep, that works fine. That should give us an hour and a half to uh, two hours before it gets dark, unless it's a really cloudy, dark day. Okay, so I'm going to put that on our calendar. Um, I'll invite Kayla. I don't know what she normally works that day. Um, so I don't, hopefully she can come. Um, but the four of us will be there. And if anybody else wants to come, encourage, it's going to be a posted meeting anyway. Um, you know, encourage them to come because I think the more people can see it because um, some people still don't even know that there's a basketball court down there even though it's an old one they didn't even know it was there so um, if we can get people to join us on that walkthrough it'd be great. Um, Kayla doesn't have hours on Fridays on her based on her signature and her email. Did she change them so she over the summer she, fall hours yeah the fall hours are Mondays Wednesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, so she may not, but she may be, if if we tell her now, um, it's, you know, she's got a week and a half, she may be able to shuffle her schedule a little bit to try to accommodate um, that Friday. Um, so um, I'll let her know and we'll cross our fingers that she can come. Yeah. Karen, in her update that she there. sent, she was, um, had asked for, uh, suggestions for winter stuff. I'm going to send her a few things, but uh, I'm hoping I can talk her into scheduling some activities uh, at Marshall, such as uh, introductory snowshoeing, uh, that kind of stuff, if she's got access to uh, a business and or instructor that would be able to do something like that. Um, up in the North Country, they do stuff like that all the time. And, you know, EMS supports it or, or one of the sporting goods uh, stores supports it, brings the gear and, uh, you know, give the kids an outdoor experience. Uh, and Marshall Park's a perfect place for that. Plenty of wide open area, uh, assuming we can get some snow on the ground. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so if anybody does have any ideas of things that they'd like to see for winter programming, certainly let her know. Um, so, all right, awesome there. Um, While we're still on Marshall Park and Park's properties, uh, the track. Um, Steve Powell and one of his employees went over and walked the entire track a week or so ago. Steve got back in touch with me. Um, 
suggested a couple of options. Uh, I'm not sure that we need to get as involved as he was thinking, at least for the first attempt at uh, bringing the surface back to somewhat what it used to be and, and you know, a better walking track without grass and weeds and, and mud. Um, the rototiller was part of my desire to try and experiment in a small area, probably part of the what used to be the 100, 100 yard dash straight area um, to the, well, I'm gonna say the west side of the uh, field. Um, the general depth of the cinders, I dug holes all the way around that track and obviously filled them back in so nobody's tripping over them. Um, but the general amount of cinder available there is three to four inches in general. I hit a few spots um, where that 100 yard dash straightaway is that were six inches deep. So with that much material available, there's a couple of different things we could actually do, but I'd like to stir up one area before winter um, and stake it and flag it off and see what it looks like in the spring. Because I think if we churn it up just to the depth of the uh, cinder and let the weather kind of wash the uh, fines down through for the winter and then roll it in the spring, it may bring it right back to the surface that we're looking for and was there for 30 or 40 years uh, previous to it being allowed to uh, have organic matter grow on top. Uh, my perception had always has been over the past few years that that organic layer was rather thick and it turns out it's not, it's, it's right on the surface. So uh, I think we could bring it back uh, very inexpensively and maybe down the road somewhere in the master plan, there's a desire for a different type of surface. surface. Um, but I think for the short term, we could bring that track back to uh, a nice walking track with the black cinder on top. Kind of look at the baseball diamond is impeding on that track now. Um, trying to just, it, I feel like maybe the baseball diamond is further back towards chestnut. It seems the track on like where the track was almost seems to be cut off a little bit. In that yeah, they they when they put the uh, when they added all the big screens to try to stop the balls from uh, hitting the houses and the cars on the chestnut street uh, backside of the home plate, they did go into that area a little bit. But I think looking at it, that area would be the area that needs the most excavation because I think a lot of the cinder uh, is inundated with stone dust. Um, but I think that could be reshaped a little bit to bring it back to its full width or close to it by m moving the uh, Chestnut Street edge of it out just a little bit to yeah. go around the, the backdrop. Backstop. It may, not, it may not even have to be that wide. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. For a walking it's, track, it, yeah, it really doesn't need to be. Fine. I mean, that was that was the uh, outdoor track track for this region, or at least for Lunenburg, for probably 50, 60 years. Every outdoor track event that went on in town was at that park. <laughs> um, so it was well maintained, and and nobody impeded on the area of that track because it was used as a regulation track. It's a one eighth loop, a one eighth mile, excuse me, loop. I do know that. And um, there was one other thing I was gonna mention about it and for the life of me, I've forgotten it at this point. Oh, uh, the other issue is the fact that it is part of the outfield of the 90 foot diamond. So unless we were to do something different with the fence uh, the track would be would not be usable during games on the 90 foot diamond. Um, I actually talked with a few of the players um, on the Phillies one day when they were there and asking them about field uh, distances and things like that. And they admitted that that field actually is not full regulation field for um, their level of uh, baseball. The uh, the fences are uh, closer to uh, home plate than the than the actual regulation calls for, but I guess they're close enough. The distance is close enough so that they can use the field. Um, so moving the fence in 
another 10 feet closer would probably take it out of that ranking. Um, so for long-term planning, we've, we need to think about whether we want the track usable, more usable or what we're gonna do with that 90 foot diamond space, but that's for discussion for another night. Thank you for doing all that legwork, by the way. My pleasure. I love digging holes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, anybody, I never wrote it, Taylor. Does anybody else have anything on any of our other parks or Marshall Park while we're here? No, the, actually, I meant to um, just uh, going back to the field usage thing for a second and mm -hmm. thinking of the fees and so forth. Do we? Does there need to be, given where we're at with things now, does there need to be a uh, I mean, are, are there COVID stipulations in there that are feeding into the increased costs and so forth? I mean, I'm assuming everything I looked at when I started looking at soccer, like restrooms have to be cleaned after each use and all those sorts of scenarios. I mean, is that? No, I don't think so. Um, okay. Because um, what we had done this last summer was um, each organization that was using the field. So the Phillies, the Little League needed to provide a COVID plan and they were okay. responsible any COVID um, requirements that, you know, we had to follow. Okay. Um, so I don't think so. I think a lot of it's coming down to, even though the maintenance could be improved and have some improvements, I don't, even the cost to mow the fields is, it's pretty high. Um, the cost, our water bill costs are considerable. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, Aaron, while you're mentioning bills, I haven't posed the question to town hall yet, but if we paid a phone bill for the beach house this summer, then we paid for services not rendered. Why is that? Because that phone line was never connected to the building. I called that phone number once a week the entire summer, and it never rang in the building. The wire's sitting, hanging from the telephone pole across the street. Will you um, throw that over to Kayla? Yes, I will. Okay. All right, excellent. Um, I did want to give a quick open space update. So we met last week. Um, it's a wide range of knowledgeable people. They're a phenomenal group um, who knows their stuff. So I'm hoping that um, we do eventually get somebody here. Um, I did want to let everybody know that they're going to start talk. They're going to start talking about properties that are town that are owned by the town of Lunenburg under the care and control of um, board of selectmen, which are general municipal properties. To start making some determination as to um, if they can be moved over to actual groups that could use those fields. So, are are there space are I don't mean fields, properties. Are there properties that could be better suited to go to Conservation Commission or to the Parks Commission or to the Cemetery um, Commission if, they're, if they need more space? They're gonna start looking through there. Hopefully we start seeing um, community dialogue around these as well because some of the properties, there's one on um, Parmenter. I think it's I think it's Parmenter, Parmenter Ave, Parmenter Street. It's right on Lake Shirley. It's a beautiful piece of property. It'd be wonderful for a rooftop park where people could bring in their kayaks and their canoes. Because right now the only access to Lake Shirley is through Stump Cove, and if you've ever been down there, you'll know it's not really much of an access. It's a path. Um, so there's properties like that. Um, there's some over on Northfield Road. If you're interested in a listing of the properties, there should be some, the listing should be in the open space plan, which can be found under the planning boards portion of the website. And you can also go to the GIS and just type in town of Lunenburg and anything that comes up um, as either general municipal or board of selectmen is the properties that they're um, starting to look into. Did I summarize that right, Dave? Yes, you did. Definitely. One, one other thing I'd like to bring up that open space has been involved in it. It's more planning board conservation and open space. Uh, they're negotiating a donation of what a couple of acres in conjunction with the greenhouse project um, up near Walmart. 
right to front. connect the conservation, the existing conservation land to what is parks land as part of the Saliva uh, acquisition. Um, Karen, you and I had a conversation about uh, disc golf a few years, weeks ago. Um, so I'm just throwing this out there as this moves forward and I'll, I'll have a conversation with the chair of planning. Uh, if it's at all possible, I'd like to make sure that if we wanted to, we could put a small parking lot somewhere at that trail access area. Um, what I, the plus to that, I believe, is that it's not in a residential area. So we won't get pushed back from residential abutters that, oh, I don't want a bunch of cars parking, you know, in my front yard or whatever, as you would get up on the Northfield Road side. So if by chance, and this will be down the road somewhere, if we were to put a, a disc golf um, course in there, I'm trying to come up with the right word for it, uh, in that end of the property, there would need to be a parking area to accommodate it. Um, yeah, they could probably uh, also use part of Hannaford's uh, parking parking lot or something like that, but I wouldn't want to, you know, impose on them. And I'm sure there'd be some pushback with the liability the way it is nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. All right, so that's all for the open space update. Um, does anybody have any other public or board comments? All right, um, the, I do want to make sure under um, correspondence that um, we had received an email from a residence a few weeks back regarding a sign at, Marshall, at Fitzgerald Field. Um, Chris, I don't know if you were on that distribution list yet. Um, no. I, if you weren't if you weren't so you can see it so the, basically the concern is that the field the sign um, isn't in good shape and it needs some attention um, I have DPW is aware of that he received a copy of it um, I don't know if anything's been done yet um, but I will make sure that Kayla and Jack are both aware so they can uh, make some determinations as to what needs to get done with that sign um, it just seems like it's I think it's multiple layers and I, it looks like at least from the road that it looks like the layers are coming apart so just need some attention um but since it was they went out of their way to send it to us so we would be aware i just wanted to make sure we all knew that all right next meeting date and agenda we are aiming for october 3rd i'm so not october 3rd october 30th for a marshall park walkthrough four o'clock yes. four o'clock so that needs to be posted. I am going to totally forget this. Hold on, I need to get a piece. This is the nice part about sitting at my husband's desk. He's got all this stuff. All right, so October 30th, walk through at 4 p.m. Um, how about a regularly scheduled um, meeting? I was thinking a Monday night, um, the 9th, of November, um, the 16th of November. Does anybody have any preferences? I'd prefer the 9th, uh, that's just after elections and before uh, town meeting. Uh, the 16th would be my night uh, from FinCom position and TCP to prep for the meeting the next day okay. or the next evening. Um, also, I think that brings it into the early part of the month so we don't leave these organizations hanging uh, till Thanksgiving or later to uh, know for sure what the fees are going to be. Can you folks, Chris and um, Susanna, would November 9th work for you guys? 9th yep. is good for me. Yep. Uh, we'll do 6.30 p.m. Does that work for everybody? Perfect. Okay. Six would even work for me. I don't, it's up to you guys. I, I'm hesitant just because if we end up with a game, there's a chance that I could be back for 630, but okay. I would be back for six. Yep. Um, and then do we want to schedule December while we're looking at the calendar? We might as well. Yeah. It's well, going to be a chopped up month selectmen. anyway. Yeah. Will the Board of Selectmen meeting count as our full meeting or not? No. 
No. Well, if you go to their meeting, it won't. And I, I would like to not skip a month if we don't have to, where we're just sort of we're bringing on new members, and it would be nice yeah. to think about moving from Marshall. Um, so we were going to throw the date of December one out to the board of selectmen if they want us to come to their meeting. Yeah. Um, do, should we do December fourteenth? Would that work for seven thirty? Oh. I was going to suggest that if that's good with you guys, let's shoot for that. We can, yes. we've got time to adjust it at the next meeting yeah. if we have to. So December 7th or 14th? Uh, either, either works. Either works for me. Dave? Yep, 14th is good. Okay. All right. So we're good there. I don't think we have anything else that was fairly painless. Thank you guys. Um, <laughs> If I could get a motion to adjourn at 740. So moved. A second. Second. Great. Thank you. Quick roll call, Dave. Aye. Chris. Aye. And Susanna. Aye. And for myself, we're all set at 740 p.m. Thanks, everybody. Night. Thank you. Night. Night.